A warm greeting, today is Tuesday, August 15, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In this video, we will be discussing several disturbances that we will be observing over the next few days in the Atlantic Ocean Basin. After several weeks with no cyclonic development in the Atlantic, it seems that the next few days will be quite active. First, as I mentioned yesterday, we will be monitoring several tropical waves that have the potential for development over the next seven days in the tropical Atlantic. It's important for residents of the Eastern Caribbean to pay attention to the evolution of these disturbances. Additionally, over the next few days, we will also be monitoring the waters in the northern Gulf of Mexico. A low-pressure system is expected to move through this region, and it could encounter favorable conditions for development just east of Texas. For more information about the forecast for this disturbance in the Gulf of Mexico, I invite you to stay tuned for another video that I will be recording later today. When we look at the latest perspective from the National Hurricane Center, you'll see that they have marked three areas with probabilities of cyclonic development. Currently, the Gulf of Mexico area has a 20% chance of development over the next seven days. Additionally, we have a tropical wave located near longitude 35 degrees west, and the National Hurricane Center has increased the chances of cyclonic development to 30% due to the afternoon model run showing higher probabilities of some form of development. On the other hand, a strong tropical wave is emerging from Africa tonight, and this wave also has a 30% chance of development as it moves over the Cape Verde region and heads northwest. Before we continue, it's very important to note that while we are monitoring the Caribbean, there is currently no reason for concern because there is a lot of uncertainty, and we still don't know the potential paths these disturbances might take. Particularly in the region of the tropical Atlantic, the forecast is quite challenging, and I'll be discussing it in the coming minutes. Regarding the Caribbean, we will be keeping an eye on this first tropical wave. As you can see, the probabilities of development have increased to 30% within 7 days. However, remember that a 30% chance is still relatively low, especially since, as I mentioned yesterday, we have a layer of Saharan dust covering much of the tropical Atlantic. This dry air, combined with the Saharan dust, creates conditions that are not favorable for the development and strengthening of these disturbances. On the other hand, wind shear currently doesn't seem to be a significant impediment to the development of a low-pressure system. These conditions are probably marginally favorable for the gradual development of a tropical cyclone in the tropical Atlantic. Currently, we have several areas of unsettled weather that remain disorganized. First, a strong tropical wave, which is the first disturbance we're monitoring, and the new tropical wave that will emerge from the African region in the next few hours. These areas are also being influenced by the monsoonal trough, making the forecast quite complicated due to the uncertainty surrounding the development of a more defined circulation center. This uncertainty can have significant implications for the long-term trajectory of the low-pressure system that forms in this area. As an example, take a look at the vorticity forecast from the European model. For next Thursday night, you can see a maximum vorticity area extending from the Cape Verde Islands towards the South American region. Specifically, I want you to notice that the European model develops three main vorticity areas, and any of these three areas could see the development of a low-pressure system. The one marked by the National Hurricane Center is this area located near longitude 35 degrees west, and the other vorticity area is associated with a new tropical wave that would be situated over the Cape Verde region. However, remember that we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that there's another area we will be monitoring, one that will move through the Caribbean. Yet, at the moment, it hasn't been designated with probabilities of cyclonic development. Even though it promises to bring rain to the Lesser Antilles over the weekend. Now, let's see what changes have emerged in the forecasts of the global models. Let's start with the GFS model, which in today's afternoon run, we've seen a significant change in the expectation of cyclonic development. You can see that by early Wednesday morning, there's a low-pressure system associated with the first tropical wave, and it quickly intensifies into a tropical depression or tropical storm as early as Thursday night or Friday morning. Additionally, you can see that the next tropical wave is also gaining organization near or over the Cape Verde Islands by Thursday night or Friday morning. Furthermore, in this forecast, the GFS model continues to strengthen the first tropical wave. It's quite aggressive in the late afternoon forecast today, suggesting a hurricane could develop during Sunday or Monday hours. Additionally, you can see that the second tropical wave in today's afternoon run of the GFS model doesn't show sufficient cyclonic development. Therefore, it seems that in the long term, if the first tropical wave strengthens significantly, it will likely have a trajectory to the northwest, passing well clear of the Caribbean. However, this is a long-term forecast, and significant changes in this trajectory are possible. Importantly, we still don't know where that circulation center might form. Now, let's take a look at the European model. Here we have today's afternoon run, 
which develops the first tropical wave that the National Hurricane Center is monitoring. By Friday hours, it potentially becomes a tropical depression. Additionally, it suggests that a tropical depression or tropical storm associated with the second tropical wave emerging from Africa. We also see the other area that the National Hurricane Center has yet to designate but could reach the Caribbean as an area of unsettled weather, bringing some rain. However, at the moment, development is not anticipated due to the presence of considerable Saharan desert dust. Like the GFS model, notice that the European model maintains a trajectory toward the northwest, taking these cyclones at a considerable distance from the Caribbean. Although the European and GFS models are the two best models we have, there are others that show a slightly more westward trajectory. For example, the German model has a low-pressure system, possibly a tropical depression or tropical storm, moving slightly more to the west during the weekend. Additionally, the UK model also suggests a low but existing probability of a slightly more westward movement. In general, there's quite a bit of uncertainty about where the next low-pressure system might head. Our job is to observe calmly, and at the moment, there's no risk for the Caribbean. We'll simply stay vigilant regarding the evolution of this forecast. I also want you to see the ensemble members of the GFS model, where basically all of them show trajectories that are quite safely distant from the Caribbean and associated with the first and second tropical waves. Similarly, the ensemble members of the European model also maintain trajectories favoring a northwestward movement. But notice that the ensemble members of the European model also highlight the need to monitor the other vorticity area that could develop near longitude 50 degrees west over the next 72 hours. This area hasn't been marked by the National Hurricane Center. And for now, we are officially observing these two tropical waves. Well, that would be all for the afternoon update today. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more information over the next few days regarding these potential cyclonic developments. Goodbye, and I hope everyone has an excellent day.